Hello and aloha po. My name is Abbas Tamuri. I am the elder of God and envoy of Baha'u'llah on the earth, not recognized by it. anybody that I know of. Today is 27th of November. Time is uh, 10.40, Saturday. I became grievously sick to the hospital and uh, basically my blood pressure and uh, sugar was up. So there's about five days right now we're battling it out and I feel a little bit better, it's still frail. Uh, I would have to bring a whole lot of other uh, topic I plan anyways. What I've spoken to in the last 20 years, time has changed. I have improved. Although it's not negating the past, but just adding to what it was in the past. I was in conversation with a good friend of mine, and that whenever I talk to him, somehow a new idea generates. That's what Abdul Ba says from the clashes of the opinion, the truth will sparkle out. And uh, I felt that I have to be speaking about a perfect government because the whole world is now suffering right now from a lack of the governments or bad government, lack of good governments. Uh, many people, they say, what did Baha'i faith brought for us that we didn't have before or we cannot have now? There are many things, you know, or simply they are so essential, so new. Uh, but this is one of them. Baha'u'llah actually in the Baha'i faith has revealed, the Baha'i faith overall has revealed a pattern, a formula for a perfect government, okay? Of any type, could be a religious government, could be a social government, political government, national government, any type of government. And Shoghi Effendi refers to that very clearly and he recognizes, basically, in the world order of Baha'u'llah, he recognizes that uh, mankind have had before uh, about four types of government, whether it is democracy, which is new actually in a few hundred years, except for the time of Romans, or people rule, or majority, rule of majority, democracy. But there have been uh, autocracy. Autocracy is the, where a king, you know, a dictator rules, the one man's voice. We have that right now, several places. So as a theocracy, which is religious authorities, they rule. And aristocracy, which is the uh, certain noble people, you know. And he says that these four types of government have, I don't know, there are certain elements that has been good in it. And Baha'i Faith has taken the good element of this and uh, left behind what is bad. But right now in the world, democracy is something that is like a word of God, like there is no other way but democracy. Because they think, what's the other things? Should become like China? Go like this uh, Middle East country? dictatorship, there is no other way except voting for a government that rules over the people. There are good elements of this system that has been in the past. Uh, for example, aristocracy, which makes a nobleman a king followed by his son or daughter and so on. It has a good things in it because one man in his lifetime may not be able to finish everything for his people, however good he is. So he's raising the kid and tell to the kids and kid follows. 
There are examples of it that has worked. And then it deteriorates because a bad one comes in and creates a, you know, everything goes away. It hasn't worked. Mankind did not accept this for today's. Then, of course, we have uh, uh, autocracy right now that has been in the past because uh, the opinions of many people would not get them to go somewhere. And one authority, when is in charge, something happens, you know. So in this case, in the Baha'i faith, the autocrat really is God because he's not like us. He's not human and he reveals himself in the form of a manifestation of a man that tells us things that uh, we, uh, it's impossible for us to know otherwise. And the distance between us and him is so big that it's like a father to the son, naturally a son, a father to a little baby of five, six years old, he has to be dictating, you know. This is why prophets of God would have to dictate. They have dictated in the past a certain ways. And it is good if the dictator is God or it is that learned, that mature, that high, has proven himself. Aristocracy comes in a form of Baha'u'llah that chooses a son, Abdul Baha and Shoghi Effendi, it seems like a lineage that goes. Definitely necessary because Baha'u'llah could not say everything for the people that had to bridge the past with this future. Therefore, these three have bridged that gap. That's a necessity. But if it is in the hand of the ordinary people, it seems like kings and monarchs in the world, they're not doing a good job. So we're coming down to the democracy, the biggest one right now, we have in the US. The problem of democracy is that this is a eternal rule. It will never change. It's one of those prime directive. In any given society, of any sort, of any type, of any time. There is a minority of the people, a cluster, that is a smarter, better, that form the scientists, form the philosopher, the lawyers, the philo artists. These groups of the people, a million years from now, or a million years from before, it always existed. And democracy is the rule of majority. And majority will rule over this poor minority. So Galileo has been put into the arrest. The greatest people right now would not be heard. People uh, don't listen to Dr. Fauci and other scientists because politicians, they're overwhelming them. They say we are elected, you are not elected. So they're toying around with these great people. And these are the very backbone of the progress in the world. Because of the scientists, because of this learned, as it is called in the Baha'i Faith, we are here today. How do we create a system that they also have their voice? Democracy doesn't allow that. We always have seen it in the US example. The foolishest man in the world, which I think is suffering from psychotism, Donald Trump, actually rules over Dr. Fauci and others and people believe in them. Why? Because he's getting elected. He has the power. And all these doctors have to shut up. They can't protect people. There's a problem with democracy. In the Baha'i Faith, the 
this has been recognized very well. If I explain to you in the terms of a religious government, which is the Baha'i faith authorities, that they rule over the Baha'is, there is an elected body called Universal House of Justice, and these guys could be the butcher on the corner of a street, it could be anybody, it's just by election. The merits in there are not, for example, is not saying that you have to uh, vote for those who have PhDs, you have to vote for those who have certified law degrees. Like in US, many places they elect the judge, not among all the people, just among the judges, among those who are certified. In the Baha'i Faith, it's called rulers and learned. It's two groups. The rulers are the majority that are elected. They execute the law. But what if it is wrong? Shogh Effendi says, if guardian, which is me, and the Universal Laws of Justice was formed at my time, if it makes a mistakes, or they do something that's not according to the Baha'i Faith, I would have to ask them to change it. The fact that he doesn't exist right now, and there's no other infallible guardian, it doesn't change the fact that Universal House of Justice can make say things that is not within the uh, frame of the Baha'i Faith. How do we prevent this? Baha'u'llah has created a second house which is called the Universal Laws of Guardianship. They have to guard. They will decide what the book means. This is why in the Baha'i Faith, it says that religion has to be according to science and logic. So this particular house, which is not a rulers, they don't rule over people. The House of Guardianship has to be elected, the Baha'i Faith has to be five women or more. They have all the committees of scientists and all the people in the world working with them. If tomorrow something has to be found as useful or not useful or harmful, they will study the book alongside of the science and scientists, they decide it's not. Universal laws of justice, which is a governing body, cannot go against them. Without their approval, their legislation is unlawful. See, it is fixed. It is a case right now in the uh, United States. Okay, Congress is elected. And Senate is elected to. But there's no criteria for Senate. You can't make it appointed. It's not going to work. Because then democracy dies. But here, in my opinion, the Senate of the United States have to be, this is what we came with my friend here, as we were talking, has to be elected, but has to be elected from amongst certified individual in the society, just like the judges that they get elected. So there are many bodies like that, a group of uh, politicians, social scientists, political scientists, psychologists, doctors, uh, I don't know, physicists. There are many bodies like that, they are elected by the people, they will rate that the decision of the government, whether to increase or decrease the interest rate is harmful or not. And they cannot go against their decisions because they are proven scientists. So there are thousands, let's say, of doctors, millions probably in the US at least, Many of them are known. They have to be elected by people or from among its own groups. It has to be an election. 
of a specialist. This way they are representing those who are learned. Those are the gift of the society, to a society, to the people. They have to have a say in what's happening. And that cannot just be dismissed. It has to be the law. Then it came that uh, my friend says, okay, now there are two of them and they don't agree. What do we do now? Then there is a Supreme Court. Right now it's appointed. But the Supreme Court judges also have to be elected by people or again by all the judges in the country. Either way, it could work. Then they tell them that you are disagreeing bring it to the court the public to see you bring your lawyers you bring your lawyers we will see if the government is right or wrong but it has to have a root a lawful root in the society if we do this then democracy is saved so that the majority of people they are fine with certain individuals, certain congressmen or whoever. But then there has to be a, a say of those who, are the, who have brought this society to this place right now. They have to have a legal say in what this. If we do this, we can create a perfect government. And the Baha'i faith, uh, further, it has divided these things. For example, universal laws of justice, universal laws of government, universal laws of guardianship in future, they are only religious affair of the Baha'is, nothing else. Christians, Muslims, within the Baha'i society, they could have their own. But the Baha'i government, which is social structure, economical structure of the system is different from that. In the Baha'i society, a, a Baha'i could vote for a non-Baha'i to become the president of the country. But it has nothing to do with the religion. That has to do with the social and economical structure in the society. There, a person does not need to have a particular religion because it deals with matter of the social and um, economical, but mankind has proven have mastered it. The spiritual problem, we don't know yet, you know. Maybe one day there is no more profit, but not yet. This is one of the things that Baha'is, they don't understand what I'm saying, and people also, they're dismissing. This is the gift of Baha'u'llah. He has created a democracy in the religious affair of the people. One who legislate, just like a prophet, any new laws, but another house watches it to see that they're not going wrong. And they both have power. Universal House of Guardianship is not ruling the people. But any legislation of the Universal House of Justice would have to comply with the opinion and acceptance of the House of Guardianship without which the law will not be a law. That's what Shogu Fender says. They could say things that it's outside of the faith. There has to be a person which he was, and if he is not, that person, as he says, he didn't elect anybody, select anybody, or appoint anybody, but he did talk about a thing called, in Arabic, Darul Velaye, or universal laws of guardianship. He says it's in complementation to the universal laws of justice. has to be there as the third building of the five. But the boys, you know, they dismiss it. And in the universal, in the universal laws of justice, it's hard to say. And they probably do believe in what I'm saying. But they're scared of accepting me. Because they say that if we accept you are an elder, an authority, the Baha'is, they might leave us <laughs> because I'm not a very popular person, probably. 
So, and that's what they say. So, uh, other time I was talking to this friend of mine that I have said everything I have to say. I have uh, prepared right now pretty soon 10 books that I will be sending a copy to Universal House of Justice of the writing of the Bob. Which it, I did it out of boredom. That's not what I'm meant to do. But yet, it's uh, so important for the future. Of some countries like Iran. Um, so the word is talk. Consistency is there. But I'm going to be something. I'm going to be doing something that no man has done on the planet Earth. Not at our time. That is the work of the Lord God. No one can do that. But I've been talking to Baha'u'llah about it. And uh, he can't stop me to do it. He doesn't, actually. The greatest commodity for Baha'u'llah which is the only God that we can understand, of which this particular individual person called Baha'u'llah is only a manifestation, a transmission of a reality that has created the entire existence. The entire existence is an emanation of him, whose reality is in all of us. <laughs> He has a phone line in all of us. But it's like a movie, Total Recall. You gotta dig in to find that. And uh, I know what that is. And that is whom I consult with. And um, I'm gonna have to do it. I might die in the process. But so be it, if that's what has to happen. Anyways, Allah Appa, good night. And I'm not going to bug you more than this. But when I feel better, I will continue a whole lot of stuff that I have to tell you later on, okay? Good night.